so there might be a bit of noise because I've got the window open because for the first time this year it's a really nice day so hey hey so anyway um, as I said yesterday or if you're not watching those it won't make any sense that but I'm going to be doing an overview review look at my comic haul what I picked up this Wednesday um, but I didn't go the week before so I've got two weeks worth and it's a chunk of comics so I could be here a while so I'm going to start with my first one because I want to start with this one because it could be ranty but I don't want it to be it's just because it's left me hugely disappointed and <laughs> hmm. <laughs> so anyway it's um, Ultimate Spider-Man number four so it's by Jonathan Hickman of course but what's his name now um, yeah Marco Chiquetto's not doing the artwork instead it's David Messina and I do not like the art I mean just look at Mary Jane's hair there what is that strand doing it makes no sense the fate to say right basically it's a sit down comic all that goes on in this comic is a dinner between Peter Parker, Mary Jane, Harry Osborne and ooh surprise Gwen Stacy who is with Harry it is Harry Osborne isn't it? Or is it yeah Norman Osborne's his dad yeah that's right um, and of course Harry Osborne is the Green Goblin but it turns out he is a good guy so it's I think it's about 24 pages so as you can see that's the artwork some shots of food <laughs> shots of people eating food more shots of people eating food wiping their face after they've had some food <laughs> shots of Mary Jane and Gwen in the toilets or the bathroom and that's it it's a conversation right so three issues got it ramping up ramping up ramping up and then it just goes <laughs> I've had people commenting on threads and all that saying yeah but it's got nuance and it's setting the scenes for something and blah 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 it's like Chris Claremont and stuff like this bullshit <laughs> this could have been done in two pages I have no problem with Talking Heads. I'll be coming to a uh, comic soon which has got Talking Heads, but it progresses the story. You're not reading it just going, I was page counting after page four. I never page count. I was page counting. I was wondering how many pages of this hell have I got to go through? And people said, oh, but the dialogue is superb. It's fantastic at dialogue. The dialogue's not great. The dialogue is clunky. And to be honest, if this is good dialogue, I don't like these people. It's just awful. It's it's just look. Oh, it's bad. Like this one page. Oh my god, this is amazing. Now what about the food? And then Harry says, "Yeah, chef's pretty great. She's from Argentina, I think." And Gwen says, "Uruguay." And then Peter says, "It's been a while since we've actually. When was the last time we went out on a date? Date? BK baby. That's Mary Jane." Harry, BK, what? Ah, before kids. And then Mary Jane's face, and she's, you got it. Do you two have any? Gwen says, children? No, I'd like to think I'd be a good mum, but none for us yet, so we're considering it though. And Peter says, well, it's just the best thing ever. What's the hold up? But look at Peter's face as he's saying it. It doesn't match what he's saying. So, Oh, and Harry says, the world will bring them into... It's just shit. It's like trying to bring dramatic gravitas to a dialogue over a fucking dinner set meal. <laughs> it's like a really badly written episode of 30-something, if anybody's old enough to remember that. It's soapy in the wrong way. It's dry. It's dull. It makes the most art house films I've seen, and I love art house films. One of my favourite directors is Jim Jarmusch, and a lot of his films are just about dialogue. But the dialogue's interesting. The dialogue in this is fucking boring. Yeah, great. It's got Gwen. It's got a reveal of Gwen. But that, like I said, that could have been done in a page or two pages. It's unnecessarily flat and flabby. 
it killed the ramp up what we did in the first three issues. It's just kind of like crashed and gone static. It was a choice. It was like it was in a different book. And I don't get how they couldn't keep Mark Chiquetto to do like four solid issues, five solid issues, then have a guest artist. But to have an artist guesting in the middle of a story and this throws you out of the story, it's bad writing. The cover's boring as well. There's a little bit with um, Ben with Ben and his, gr and his nephew and um, grand nephews, whatever you call it, I don't know. And um, J. Jonah. That's the most interesting part in the comic. Two pages of those go, oh, yes, finally, we're away from the fucking dinner table. Um, but I hated it. I really hated it. I hated it so much that I'm stopping the comic. Give the art four out of ten, give the story three out of ten. It's the biggest disappointment I've had this year in comics. Um, I was riding on a crest of wave, also, thinking out the ultimates are the answer for Marvel now. I'll stop this, I've stopped Ultimate Black Panther. I am actually stopping Ultimate X Men, but not for any negative reasons. I just think Peach's um, story will work much better in the collected format. It's very manga inspired and it's a quick read to get monthly, so I think I'm going to wait for it to be collected. Uh, but yeah, biggest disappointment. John of Hickman, I know people exalt you and treat you like the second coming for Marvel, but if this is the second coming, I think I'll wait for, wait, wait for the third coming. It's not very good. It's pretentious twat. Twat, not twat or twats as the Americans would say it's not pretentious it's pretentious waffle and I read a lot of indie comics and a lot of them are talking heads and it's interesting this is not it's dull like I said the great reveal about Gwen being with Harry oh and the, the oh big twist they get Harry saying with great power comes great responsibility so what who cares Boring, bullshit, rubbish. So yeah, I've stopped Ultimate Spider-Man after singing its praises for three months. I might get hate for that, but I don't care. It's my my money. <laughs> I, I pay money for that comic, so I want to be entertained. And that did not entertain me. I don't like soap operas, I'm sorry. But I'm going to praise another writer, and it's the exact fucking same writer, Jonathan Hickman, with um, <laughs> Valerio Shitti. Got to be careful with that name, as some... YouTubers know, I know um, Geeky Hog knows about that. Um, and this is issue seven, but I'm going to give a negative about this now. And my negative for this is that it's finishing on issue eight. I love this comic. Right from the cover, the interior artwork has not changed. The artwork is absolutely gorgeous, all the way down to the colour schemes as well. I love the characters, and I feel I don't get why they're stopping it with issue eight. It's robbing us of the best thing that Marvel's done in years. I don't mind paying four dollars ninety nine for this one. It's a great comic. The characters are very enjoyable. It's the first time I've felt like Marvel's done like a grown up comic. It doesn't hold your hand, and there's a good mystery, but the the mystery won't be solved in an issue. So I feel like issue eight, unfortunately, might be a damp script, and that's what leaves me disappointed. I would love for this to be ongoing, or for them to come back with some more issues. Hopefully, they do. So, Marvel, I'm going to give you zero out of ten for stopping this comic, but Jonathan Hickman and Valerio Schiti and Marty Garcia, I'm giving you nine out of ten. I love this comic, and I'm sad it's going to end with issue eight. See, I do like Jonathan Hickman. I just don't like what he's doing with Ultimate Spider-Man. And a completely different tangents, but a completely different tone of comic. Deadpool, Wolverine, World War WW3. I got this because I'm an Adam Kubert Wolverine fan. The artwork in this is beautiful. It's four dollars ninety nine, but it's a chunk. It's a thick book. And he does my favourite Wolverine. The reason I like Adam Kubert. He does Wolverine always meant to be. He's a short ass. He's an angry hair. He's short ass, and he he looks like he stinks of <laughs> Old Spice or something like that. Old Spice and whiskey and cigars. Um, it's just brilliant. And Joe Kelly, he he knows how to write Jack Deadpool. And uh, it's just a fun. It's got its measured amount of humour, and it's quite surreal in places, but it also has really good handle on action. And it's just fun. I wish this was an ongoing Wolverine and Deadpool comic, to be honest. It's a really good buddy comic, what turns into something into an enemy, uh, friend, uh, kind of like frenemies at, by the end of it. It's worth the admission for the artwork, but the Joe Kelly's a solid writer as well. I really enjoy this. I'm going to give this 8 out of 10. 
and I'll be collecting this all the way through. It's just three issues, so it's worth it. And then another Marvel one I'm going to see. So, I'm going to have, so one, two, three, four. So there's four Marvel comics this time, and I like three of them. The third one I love is Gun F Get Fury. I was going to say Gun Fury. That was an old uh, Cell comic, I think. Um, it's by Garth Ennis, Jason Burroughs on the artwork, and Dave Johnson on the cover. Quite a nice cover. Jason Burroughs, I didn't used to like his art, but I love what, how his artwork's developed now. It's gone very, almost like European flavour. I don't think this will appeal to quite a few of the American audience because it's quite European in style. Um, and I, but I love it. it. I picture this being like in Metal Herland or 2000 AD, something like that. I love the colouring as well for like the camera for the jungle effects. This is very, very explicit. It's a, a comic for adults, which surprised me because it's by Deep Marvel. It's a Max comic. Marvel, bring back Max, not just for this, but for everything. I couldn't give a shit about the Red Band comics. That's just violence for the sake of violence. That's just, oh, we've got a bit of blood. Let's slap an extra dollar on it and get the mugs to buy it. This is a grown-up comic. It's got a great plot. And the action is superb. And yeah, it does have violence. But it's not violence for violence's sake. It propels the story across. But it, like I said, it's violent. I loved it. So it's set around, Vietnam, around the time of the Vietnam War. And Frank Castle is part of the special ops team. He does the dirty jobs while the government don't want Joe Public to hear about. And he's been tasked with Get Fury. So he's been tasked to get Fury because Fury basically knows too many secrets and has been captured by the Viet Cong. Yeah, I, I want to read the next issue straight away. Nine out of ten. This is great. So this is on my poll list now. Really enjoyed it. See, so three Marvel comics got positives, one got a negative. That's good for me. Come on. <laughs> so we're now going to move on to my, I guess it is my favourite company, because I've, I've loved this company all my life, and it's DC. And one of my favourite comics at present is The Penguin. It's devastated here this is going to be a 12 issue instead of ongoing, but in a way, maybe it stops it jumping the shark, it'll finish how on a satisfactory note. So it's Penguin by Tom King and... Uh, Raphael Delator um, on art, Marcelo Maiello on colours, and Clayson Cowles on lettering. Everything about this comic is great. The lettering, the colours, the artwork. It's just a perfect ec crime comic. It's a perfect exploration of crime. What propels somebody to do be like that? What propels somebody to grasp for power? And for a Tom King book, it's not dialogue heavy. Um, the dialogue, make the dialogue is necessary. It's the, it doesn't overstay its welcome like it can on some of his books. Um, so this is my favorite Tom King book, even more than Helen of Windholm, which is lovely, wonderful. But this one I enjoy every week. So I'm always on need a top and pile to read. Um, yeah, and it's moving the story along effectively. You can see it's going to ramp up to a really explosive conclusion. So basically, Penguin now is out to kill his children. <laughs> it's dark, but there's a very dark black sense of humour on it. I absolutely love it. And I love how Tom King writes Batman in here. I'm not normally a big fan of his version of Batman, but in this, he's got his voice just right. So yeah, 9 out of 10. <coughs> and then we're carrying on with the new event in the Superman titles, House of Brainiac. This is issue 2 by Joshua. Will this is chapter 2. Like I said, they've got the really cool Brainiac triangle so it gives me the old fangirl feeling of hey um, uh, triangle the triangle years uh, so Joshua Williamson writing it um, Sandra on the artwork the artwork is really nice of course it's got Lobo and the Cenarians I think that's how you pronounce them and um, Brainiac and it also ties in with what the backstory has been developing for a year now with the DC Tyson with Amanda Waller and so Lobo and Superman have basically teamed up now to take on Brainiac and to take on the other scenarians Zern. somebody tell me how you pronounce that because I keep on fucking it up there's a lot of F-bombs in this and I do apologise um, but yeah I love the artwork the pacing of the story is great Josh Williamson has brought the fun back into Superman and even though they've had so many different artists on Superman so each one has really brought that A game so I don't mind on the colouring it's absolutely gorgeous 
So yeah, it's a good event comic. And what I like about this event comic, it's tidy. It keeps just within a small number of titles and it's going to finish in another month. So I have no problem with that. Talking of Hasbro, there's a 2.5 issue. and it's, it's not necessary, but it's good. It's good fun read. This is the Hasbro special. So it's got Josh Williamson doing one of the main stories with artwork by Steve Pugh. But it's also got um, Mark Russell as well doing a story. He's doing one illustrated by Steve Pugh, which focuses on is it Bibbo or Bobo, whatever it's called, but this guy anyway, and Perry White. And I enjoyed, like I said, it's not necessary, it doesn't interfere with the story, or it's not essential for the main story, but it, it gives some fun insights. The Mark Russ story as well is worth the admission alone. And I, I would love for Mark Russ to do a Booster Gold or Booster Gold and Blue Beetle comic, because his sense of humour is perfect for that. And yet, it weaves in the politics of Metropolis. It weaves in how, like a mirror reflection of um, America with Donald Trump spouting his racist bullshit about uh, Mexico and places like that. Now, they're doing it now with aliens who are living in Metropolis. They're trying to, there's a politician there trying to stir up hatred so, so he can get votes, basically, and get people's money. So it's showing how politics can be used as a grift. Yeah, it's really good fun. It's not necessarily, but necessary. But if you're enjoying the Superman story, I would guess that you would enjoy it. There's not no weak parts in it. It's, all the artwork's good, and it also develops the Amanda Waller story, what will be leading up to absolute power, um, very shortly, and also gives more of a backstory of Brainiac and his reasons for why he's doing what he's doing. Um, and it's five dollars ninety nine, but there's over forty pages of story, so it's good value for money. And I, I went to have a smile on my face. It did its job. Eight out of ten. And then we got a comic. Well, it was initially meant to be six issues, then it moved to 12 issues, and now it's ongoing. And it's Green Arrow by Joshua Williamson. Izaki and Phil Hester's on it as well. I don't know if I like that cover or not. I The only thing problem I've got with this comic, I prefer Phil Hester's artwork to Izaki. Um, so... I know a lot of people like Izaki, but I remember Phil Hester on the original, on the his previous run on Green Arrow, and for me, he is one of the best Green Arrow artists. So it brings into it brings Merlin it, Merlin more prominently aligned, I guess, with the DC with the um, T CW version of Merlin. Um, there's a lot of the backstory is very very similar, but it's good. It's a good kind of like explaining why Merlin was doing hunting Green Arrow for so for so long and his reasons behind it goes into their backstory a bit some nice character development between the two of them and it also develops Green Arrow's role in absolute power and how he's basically in a stranglehold at the moment with Amanda Waller so I'll give this 8 out of 10 it does its job I think one of the best covers of the week is this issue 1084 of Detective Comics really love that cover gorgeous gorgeous cover and the artwork inside is by it's written by Ram V of course and artwork by Javier Fernandez I adore this artwork this artwork is absolutely beautiful I love it when it's when Batman art is very noirish and kind of minimalist in a way I guess you know where the line work isn't as detailed where a simple brush stroke can do the shadow work more than loads of cross action and this is fun this is Batman coming back rejuvenated after like two years worth of being constantly down pressed and attacked he's come back to get his city again to reclaim Gotham and it's a very very satisfying read and talking of satisfying reads there's a fun Cassandra Cain backup written by Alex Pacnadal focusing on her relationship with her, her mum step mum the is it Lady Shiva I think and artwork by Robin Rodriguez really again sterling top notch story do not skip on the backup strips in sets of comics they're just as fun and as relevant as the Ram V stories they're that high of quality and 9 out of 10 just a fantastic comic I'm just sad that Ram V's run wrapping up in a, another 4 or 5 issues I think and then Onto something a bit more mind bending. This has really divided fans. I love it because I hated the previous run. Um, and it's Flash by Cy Spiria. And it's 
I didn't care for Mike Diodasa's artwork on it. It's now got um, Ramon Perez on the art. And I do like this artwork. It's really nice. It's convoluted. It's a lot of um, quirkiness, a lot of surrealism, a lot of um, overhead sci-fi talk. I don't care. I love it. It's trippy as hell. It gives me a similar kind of vibe I got from reading Doom Patrol and Animal Man. And I live for those kind of weird superhero comics. And yeah, I, I've got old faith in Psy Spirit. It's now... I was scratching my head for a number of issues, but it's now slowly piecing together. So Amanda Waller's come to the forefront and she's trying to turn the country against all the speedsters. And meanwhile, Wally West has got a parallel quest where he's trying to fight this is it the slowness or the stillness? And it's just it's just fun. Nine out of ten. And the week after Flash Annual came out by Cy Spear again. Do not if you're going Flash, do get this because it ties in carries straight on into this annual and again there's 40 pages of story it's $5.99 but you get 40 pages of story I actually wish they'd bring this matte paper back to the other comics I'm not a big fan of glossy cover paper but a whole team of artists on it but Sperry, Sperry Rice and Coblish Darren Eckler of right artists on it again trippy as hell but I'm here for the ride I'll give this one 8 out of 10 because just with the juxtaposition of different artists I do like it when it's one artist so 8 out of 10 for that then on to my indies first up we've got Image and next we've got issue number 9 of World Tree man I love this comic when it initially came back I was like mm. but it found its feet in um, issue 8 there's talking heads in this look at all those talking heads there's a quite a number of pages the dialogue though is so natural James Tanyan way of dialogue and relationships is amazing I love this artwork by Blanco and the colouring by Bella is just absolutely beautiful and the lettering by Bidigar, Bidikar as well is just amazing I love the sci-fi it's like Philip K. Dick goes horror it's, it's Philip K. Dick at, at his most paranoid with the body horror of David Cronenberg like I said there's pages and pages of dialogue but it carries on it flows up and it breaks up these pages with this horror that I, I can't explain it's just it unnerves you in a very visceral um, surreal way it gets under your skin which James Tanyan is um, he's, he's one of the best writers of horror at the moment and I'm living for this art the artwork is just beautiful but yeah, if this ever made a film, I, all I could imagine, the, person I could, the only person who could really direct it would either be, um, I think it'd have to be Cronenberger if it's a TV series. Um, it'd have to be Christopher Nolan's brother, I forgot his name, who did Westworld. But that's by the by. I love this comic, 9 out of 10. Do yourself a favour, do get the trade paperback if you've not been guessing that. But one of my favourite comics of the year, and it's only issue 2 now, is Fe Feral. This... It's full of these cute cats, but the story's far from cute. If you've read Stray Dogs, you have an idea what to expect. This kind of like expands on the horror tropes of Stray Dogs. It's a, for one, it's an ongoing series that can develop the characters more. So it's kind of like um, an animal version of The Walking Dead. What would happen if? the country got overtaken by rabies of all the animals got rabid and so these cats are caught up in that in the outbreak and oh my god the tension in this book <laughs> it they killed off a character I don't I'll say no more than that and it shocked me I was like <laughs> and that's a good horror comic this is fantastic nine virgin on ten out of ten absolutely love this it's only two issues so far do yourself a favour and do pick that comic up and supports Tony Fleeks. He's one of the best creators of the past few years. Talking of one of the best creators, Dan Waters is another writer. It's not Dan Water Waters. There's two T's. It's Waters. Dan Waters. I know a lot of Americans get it wrong. It's like they can't say Mark Miller. They say Miller. But um, yeah, Dan Waters. Um, it's his sideways comic to um, the one hand. This is the Six Fingers. This is 
goes hand in hand, hand in hand. Oh dear, this <laughs> this goes in tandem with Ram V's um, sister comic, The One Hand. But this focuses on the machina machinations of the serial killer, and this elaborates more on why he's doing what he's doing. It's weird for a horror comic, and there's quite a lot of horror in it. It didn't hor horrify me. It intrigued me more than anything. Oh, excuse that. Look at that cover. That's the only thing I would say. Wear gloves if you're buying it, because the cover's very glossy and it's quite a lot of black. And my finger's stuck to the cover. Oh, good job. I'm not going to sell it though, because I love it. Um, but yeah, nine out of ten, really good. It mo moves the story along. I think there's only one more issue, and just one more issue of the one hand as well. One of the most fun projects of the year. Talking of that, talking of Dan Waters and Ram V as well. They team together on a book, and it's part of the Universal Monsters range of comics that are coming out from Skybound slash Image, and it's Creature from the Black Lagoon Lives. That cover is just so beautiful. Let's just look at that. And the artwork is by Matthew Roberts, with colours by Dave Stevens. Stewart, sorry, Dave Stewart. So, unlike the Dracula comic, which was like a reinterpretation of the classic movie, this features the creature but it's in a modern day setting and he this is basically just lays the groundwork um, so it's focusing on this female reporter we don't know much about the story but she's so such for this guy who could be a serial killer and instead she discovers something else so I just look at that page it's just beautiful um, yeah Cost up cover. It's four dollars ninety nine, but there's a lot of back matter as well. Lots of really nice covers to choose from. It's a blast. I love the Dracula one. I'm going to carry on this as well. And there's a Frankenstein one coming out, I think in December, which I'll get. Yeah, it's fun. Do yourself a favor. If you like classic horror, buy this. You'll really enjoy it. Nine out of ten. And then from Titan. Ooh. Hold on. Yeah, I'll come to that in a second. From Titan, we have Conan the Barbarian, number 10. So this is carrying on the story by... by Jim Zub and Rob Delasar. So it's got that nice Bushima style artwork. Carrying on with the story about where Conan has now somehow time travel back in time to the to the period of King Cole. King Cole was kind of like brainwashed in the last few episodes, but now he's come out of that, and so now he's helping Conan. And <laughs> unlike Marvel comics, that's why I put my hand there. There's quite a bit of nudity in it, which I love. This is how Mark Conan should be. It should be vi violent, brutal, but with a heart, and um, it's great. What can I say? Conan is one of the best comics it makes no sense Conan shouldn't be so good no. it's one of the best comics around at the moment 9 out of 10 I'm just going to pause it because there's another Conan related one I need to show ok so also from Titan there's just look at this cover by the way look at the thickness $6.99 over six, about 60-70 pages in here I oh ooh, oh I love black and white comic magazines Back in the 70s and 80s, they were my jam. I remember on holidays, I used to go to this shop that was down. We had like this chalet kind of holiday home. Down there, there was like this little farm shop and they had the old Deadly Hands of Kung Fu and all the other Marvel black and whites and I adored them. And this is like that. Got a really good story by Jim Zub and amazing kinetic artwork by Pace. And you also have the continuation of the... Um, um, Solomon Kane story with writing and art by Patrick Zercher. What more can I say about this? If you like the first one, you'll enjoy this, but even better, they've sorted out the printing so there's none of the murkiness. It's 10 out of 10, got everything it should be. It does not disappoint. It only comes out, I think it comes out bi monthly, and it's only 6 99 really good value. Titan are doing some of the best comics at the moment. I think you can still get number one. And even if you don't, this is completed itself apart from the Solomon case. So yeah, get number one. But yeah, love it. 10 out of 10. And 
moving on from there we have another retro themed comic this from Dynamite and this is Space Ghost by David Popose and Jonathan Lau so my comic shop put that one away for me I wanted to go with this one I love the old school like cartoon style artwork of that that's gorgeous artwork's really nice inside though I would like Steve Rude to do it and the story moves along at a clip this one basically just sets the introduction for Moon Space uh, Space Coast how he ends up with the two kids and the monkey I think the monkey's called Blip or Blip or something and it's fun it's good the only gripe I've got about it is, it is a uh, plot a spoiler so if you don't know don't watch the next half half minute the only thing I hate about it is um, their dad gets killed in like the first two pages and there's no reaction <laughs> I'd like to think if I got killed my daughter would be in bits and I think yeah I've still got to survive so yeah Nick. but the proposed doesn't I don't know what happened he, it's like he forget, He just he's focused so much focused on the plot moving along he doesn't focus on how they would react to their, pet, their dad being killed it, it'd only take a panel or two that's where Ultimate Spider-Man could have come in handy <laughs> they could have done a whole 24 pages on the, the grief process um, so that's the only gripe the rest of it fun but they could have put them aside for that the only kind of like acknowledge that their dad died near the end of it I'm thinking no they're like laughing and joking and going hey I'm thinking no 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 so the beats a bit initially at the beginning were really off but then it restored itself halfway through the comic if that makes sense so I am going to carry on with it. Um, I don't think it's the best launch for a comic. Um, I'll give it a 6 out of 10, but I think it can get higher with the next issue. And then my first ever distillery cut book, and the reason of course being James Tynion and Christian Ward. Love both those creators. And it's Spectrograph. The artwork is just absolutely stunning it's beautiful the dialogue is so naturalistic James Tanyon I don't know how he does it he's a bit like Cullen Bunn where he can just churn out 50 comics a year but unlike Cullen Bunn most of James Tanyon's are hits it's a ghost story for the 21st century it's got an occult introduction and then it skips a generation to modern day but the thing that disturbed me the most, it wasn't the ghosts. It re this part, there's a plot point in here. What really, I couldn't get it out of my head. I even I had a dream about it. And it, it just basically sets up the main this woman who's like one of the main characters, and it made me hate it all the way through the comic. And I guess that was the point. But it was just the plot point what they used. It involves a child, a baby, and I'm a parent. And when it's anything that involves children, it's like people who are dog lovers and pet lovers. It's like me with kids. And it, when it involves a baby, and it, it was just something that happened. I was like, night, nightmare scenario. And if I was the mum, I would not act how she did. I would have done a different course of action, but she didn't. And so that made me hate her so much. It's kind of like when she died. Well, not died, she's not dead, I don't think. No, I don't think she is. But, but kind of like whatever happened to her happened. <laughs> um, I didn't care. I was kind of like, oh yes, but at the same time, I'm going, oh, a baby, but because of what she's done to a baby. So yeah, it's the most disturbing, disturbing I felt reading a comic in years because of that. Very simple plot device. James Tony, you're a bastard. <laughs> Playing on my emotions like that. Ten out of ten. Absolutely great. It's a dear comic. It's eight dollars ninety nine, but it's in a really nice, high quality. European style format like the black label ones which are only six dollars nice nice so they could trim it down even by a dollar or a dollar fifty I'd be happy if they reduced it but it made me try more of the books but because they are so dear I'm only going to cherry pick ones that I really trust the creators on and these two guys are both at the top of the game so yeah 10 out of 10 and that's it I hope you enjoy that it's been quite a long one nearly 35 minutes and I hope to today if I I'm going to have some pizza first, but if I have the energy, I'll do uh, my Welcome to the Isocubes 
part two, where we'll look at this month's 2000 ADs and Judge Dredd magazine. Okay, bye.